and welcome. I'm the Restless Kaiser. I'm Peter Swinovich, Battlefront. But together we are Modeling for Advantage. I'm here at Battlefront's UK HQ, not quite New Zealand or Kuala Lumpur. We're hoping you're going to fly us out there one day, Peter. But today we're in Nottingham in the lead belt to talk to the legendary man himself, Peter Siminovich, uh, the chief wizard at Battlefront Flames of War. Thank you. That's you, right? I've got the right guy. You got me, yes. And you only... I don't know about being a wizard, but okay. are you got, you got okay. me, yes. Um, so, as I understand, you, most of the year you work over in New Zealand. You come over to the UK to keep an eye on these guys for a week or so each year. Yes, we do that, and the American office as well. And the American office as well. In Maryland. Yeah. So, um, for, the, for the viewers' benefit, I mean, obviously you, you run and own the company, is that no, correct? No, I am the chairman of the board and I'm the majority shareholder. But the managing director is John Paul Brizagotti. So he runs right. it on a day-to-day -day basis. He's the operations guy. He's the uh, CEO, chief right. executive officer. He's also director mm -hmm. and a share shareholder. I'm the majority shareholder. I'm also chairman of the board. Right. But I, uh, sometimes I come here and I interfere. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Right. Okay. Um, so Peter, I think to get sort of get things done again, let's get people get to know you. How did you, you know, a young man such as yourself, how did you get involved in this hobby in the round? Where did it all begin? When I was actually a young man. Yeah. Yeah. And that's in the seventies, unfortunately. Um, my parents came from Croatia. And they started with a fish shop, and across the road from the fish shop was a library. And in that library, I found a book called War Games by Donald Featherston. Right, okay, and, yeah, and you're, that, you're a Featherston generation guy. I am a Featherston generation guy, and, I, um, and I, I, I kind of knew, when I read that book, I knew this was my hobby. Right. It, it was just, everything was right about it for me, and that became my hobby. And of course, we started in New Zealand with Airfix figures. Mm -hmm. We played, uh, later on, we played modern with one 300 scale. Mm -hmm. and, and we started playing 15 mil. And we used to buy some command decision tanks. Um, oh, yeah. But we had a little, by that stage, Battlefront called Replica Models was up and running. And it was called various things. And we had a mm -hmm. shop called Pendragon Games. But historical, and we sold all sorts of products. But historical is still my great love. Yeah. And so we were, we were buying these fully lead command decision tanks, but they didn't make them all. They only made a certain range, what it was in those days, and we wanted more. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, and then Evan was doing some sculpting for us, and on a part-time basis, he was sculpting. Um, he was sculpting tanks at a balsa wood. And because we're doing resin sculpting then and lead casting, we said, well, why don't we just, you know, you make the tank, we'll cast it, and that'll give us more toys to play with. Hmm. And that's how Flames of War started. And then, so we started making these things, and then the rules From were... From balsa wood mock-ups? Yes, and we still you got... You cast it. balsa wood mock-ups? Yes, in resin. And then we cast them in, and then we made the... And then he made it out of plaster, out of plastic card and stuff, the turrets and all that sort of stuff. Uh, sorry, the gun barrels and stuff. And we cast those out of lead. So it was a combination of resin and lead. Very similar to what the resin and lead is now, although it's a much... It was all our production then, and now it's a very minor part. Hmm. But that's how it started. And then the issue was we're having great games. Then you started to look at the at rule systems. You yes, were we, still playing Donald Featherston's games. No, we were playing other games out there. Where, and I had a stack of World War II and modern rule books that you know mm -hmm. was almost as tall as me. But we weren't happy right. with we were happy with the bits of this and bits of that. Is Never, that W R G? And stuff like WRG, that. WRG, Rapid Fire. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I can name a pile of, you know, yeah. Tiger, Tiger, Burning Bright was one. Right, I can't okay. remember them all, but there was a pile as, almost as tall as me. Mm -hmm. And so, and then came along Phil Yates. I saw him at a wargaming convention and I asked he's him if he tall could, and good looking. I'll talk to this guy. Yeah, no. But um, he's tall, yes. But uh, anyway, he, and he wrote, uh, and I said, I employed him to write Flames of War. And I figured... Well, I'll give him a job for a year and he'll write three sets of rules and we'll do various things and, mm -hmm. 
you know, two and a half years later, we end up with a set of World War II rules only. But they've been, they've done the test of time. They certainly have, yeah. yeah. The whole answer, the whole thing we wanted to do was give an all-up solution. Mm -hmm. We wanted to give you the figures and the infantry that with bases with them and the rules and the organization charts so when you buy a platoon it's a platoon that matches you, you wanted the whole system because yeah. you've grown up in a world like like we all did where you bought your infantry from this company and yes. then you, your tanks from over there and your rules from over Correct. there yeah um, and sometimes things just weren't available Correct, and Games Workshop revolutionised that. They did. And said it's they a one-stop gave, shop. They gave you a one-stop shop, and why can't we do that for historical? Mm. And that's what we tried to do, and I think we've generally succeeded. Mm. Right down to the battlefield in the box terrain. Well, that's what we really love. We love that battlefield in the box terrain, and um, to me, it, it, people are time poor. Absolutely. And you got to, your army is your personal thing. You paint it, you put it together, you paint mm -hmm. it. Do you really want to paint everything else? And that's where Battlefield... So we give you every every other part of the solution, the mat, the battlefield, the box, buildings, mm. trees, etc., rivers. And then you... But you have to still... It's still about that personalization, and, and that's in your army. Yeah. And, and of yeah. course, some people love the terrain part of the business, so they buy things and they paint them, and mm. that's great as well. But I think a lot of us are just time poor. Yeah, and as, as, as certainly I've found, as, as I'm older, I wouldn't say I was cash rich and time poor, but definitely time is worth money to me. Correct. Yeah, and scenery making takes time, especially to get it to standard. Yes. And you want, and you want consistency across the range, because yeah. that's the other problem with scenery. Is, oh, I bought this ruined building when I was at a show once, and then I've got this farmhouse, but they look completely different in style. You, you need to put them on other ends of the table. Yeah, yes. absolutely. So yes. the idea that you get your scenery from one place, then there's consistency within the range. And I think that's really And it's important. been around for a long time, that there's variety as well. Yes, and... Uh, You've got more than one French townhouse. Yes, we have, and there's a lot of it. And I think, you know, one of the challenges going forward is we need to kind of keep it in stock as a core range and bring things in and out of stock with no retailer. A very, a very important part of our business is support the retailer. No mm -hmm. retailer can stock everything. It's just they, they haven't got the cash resources, the space resources, and they shouldn't, really. It's yeah. just too much. Yeah. So, and Battlefield in the Box, they should stock a core range if they can, and stuff should come in and out. And, yeah. and it's okay to be out of... You can't get that building for a while. Okay. But it's just... Yeah, you can't stock everything. Yeah. So we were talking about, about your history in gaming, and that, so that's how you came to sort of build this company. Yes. Um, and you keep saying historical, but you really, it's all about tanks, isn't it, Peter? <laughs> it's not just about there's, tanks. Th um, there's no red trousers uh, or epaulettes, uh, gold braid in these, in yet. these models. Yet. yet. Yes, no, it's... All uh, right. I, I, so the know, Erland models are coming next week, are they? No, they're not coming next week, unfortunately. I'd love to be. No, there's a lot of personal projects I would right. like to do. And I've spoken about it before. Bush Wars. I, you know, I went up there and had a look at that stuff. And, and you mentioned this before. And what, do you, what do you mean by Bush Wars? Well, basically the battle for Lomba River. The battles okay. around Kwato Carnival, where the it was the biggest tank battle for the battle. viewers. When is this? When? when where, what are we 80, talking about? Eighty-six, and it's the biggest tank battle from since World War II up to the Gulf War. What, even bigger than the kind of um, uh, Egyptian uh, the Israel Sixth, wars, the Arab-Israeli yeah, okay, war? I might have got There's some yeah. pretty big tank battles there. Yeah, it might have been from there to the Gulf War. Okay. Yeah. yeah, sorry, I won't, yeah. Somebody are gonna catch, catch me out. You but might be right, I'm not sure. I'm not, I don't, I think you're right, yes. Yeah. I'm exaggerating a bit there. But it is very much a, uh, it's just a bit something I want to do. We've mm -hmm. we've modelled lots of the vehicles, the You're right. um, the stuff we want to do, and it's just now finishing it. But it always Battlefront is a company that always has priorities, and we have to keep. We've got two hundred and fifty odd staff, and we mm -hmm. have to keep keep them all working and keep, all keep and going. You, and, and you kept all these people at <coughs> work across COVID and so forth. Yes, we did. We paid you everyone right through them. COVID. Yes, yes you looked after them, and that's where your hobby dollars are going, guys. <laughs> we looked after them and they looked after us and I yeah. think that's a, it's a win-win and uh, mm -hmm. we got great guys, we got people who work for the company for forever uh, yeah. basically and I, I love that, it's a, uh, it's a, I think most people enjoy working for us, um, I think, well they certainly stay a long time so that's a good, good mm -hmm. thing, I, 
you make toy soldiers, you play with toy soldiers, they're everywhere around you. If, if you like that, it's... Um, but even the other side of coins from a personal satisfaction way, even our factory in Kuala Lumpur, when we set up there, we a, a Toyota subsidiary company was closing down and we took 50 of their staff. You took people on? Yeah, we took them as because they, they were good. They, were, they had their own managers. They know mm -hmm. how to make things. Mm -hmm. We could operate them. machines and yep. that's what you were going to put in there. Yep, so it was a, it was a win win thing. Mm. I think out of the 50, 40 of them still work for us. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I think that's. Uh, so I, th I think I heard you say before on um, people have asked the question why Malaysia instead of China, you could make it cheaper in China. And I think you'd said before you visited these places in China, you just wouldn't want to work there. There's an old saying in the fishing industry, which is my old history yeah, yeah. Uh, don't try to sell fish you wouldn't eat yourself. Mm -hmm. And I think that's very true of all these products. Yeah. And the other thing is don't send your crew where you would, wouldn't go yourself. Yeah. And KL, to me, is, is it, it's a place I like to visit. Yeah, a place you'd I be happy to live safe there. and sound. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I'm born and bred in New Zealand, so I'm not going to live there. But I, yeah. I, it's a place that is, I'm happy to go be there. And yeah. I think... Uh, yeah. Some of the areas I've seen, the fish factories in China and stuff, no, that's a very different that's, kettle. That's not somewhere you would want to, yeah. No, yeah. it's not something I want to see in my PP people too. When I started getting involved in Flames of War a few years ago now, because we've not been playing since the beginning, it was the real tail end of version 3, I started to take notice Flames of War, and we got into it in a big way with version 4. We've had quite a few price rises over the past few years. Are you able to talk a little bit about that? It's not unique to Battlefront, the you know, price rises, but I think when I started, it, it was like five pound a tank in a platoon box, and it's now closer to, it's now eight. So what's what's the what's the story there, and what does the future look like? I'd love to say there's never going to be another price rise. And, um, well, unfortunately, um, I don't know. Uh, we just had, had one recently. Um, we haven't... You know, um, we have kept our retailer margins. We haven't hacked into them to get yes, money that, back. Yes, that, we are a secondary seller, and that is a fact. You yep. And it. I think that's really important that we support our retailers because they're doing it tough as well. Yep. Every retailer is doing it tough, not just in our hobby, but I think generally if you're selling shoes, houses, oh, absolutely. books, I, it's, it's, a tough, it's a tough environment out there. So making sure they survive is really important to us. I, mm -hmm. We just had a price rise recently. I think it was two years before that. So we had another one, two or three years. So Maybe. Yeah, I, I, I'm not going to put my I'm not gonna put my hand no. on my heart or anything here, but I think it's been quite a while. So, yes, the market at the moment, uh, the costs of everything have gone up. Um, the cost of living has gone up. And, you know, if people need more money and people need... Yeah, the cost of living's gone up. So ever, the cost of everything's gone up. So, so that's, uh, we're, that's, having, that's we're that. having to pass some of it across. And but you decided with the recent price increase, I think you held the price of the starter sets. Is that right? Yes, a uh, little bit. They've gone up a little. Oh, bit. Oh, they went up by but less. less. Less as a percentage. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And now remember. The last two price rises, one of them was the resin and lead only, and this latest price rise wasn't the resin and lead, as I remember. I it's definitely the plastics recently went up by Correct, pound but they didn't again. they didn't go up in the first last, last price no. rise. Okay, yeah. So so I, you got to kind of keep that in mind that that bit as well. I think mm. we're. I hope that we're reasonably priced. Um, I think we are. Yeah, uh, we do watch that. We want to be. We want to sell a premium product at a at a sensible price. Yeah. That's our philosophy. Okay. The people watching this will be de devastated if I don't ask. So you know, I've got I've got you here. So can you tell us a little bit about what we might expect? So it's it's the beginning of August 2023 when I'm asking this question. What are we going to see in the near future for those three games that we cover? The big games will be the Flames of War. The World War Three Team Yankee, or everybody just calls it Team Yankee, <laughs> uh, or, uh, and for us, World of Tanks, the miniatures game. So, first of all, then, Peter, what, what, what we're going to see over the next few months for Flames of War? The next few months, and I'm going to so look. So much at, as you're willing to tell us. Well, I'm going to look at my cheat sheet quick, quickly. Mm -hmm. um, early next year, you're not going to see a lot from now on. Berlin's just finished, mm. but next year. Some great you, coverage on Modeling for Advantage of the Berlin release, by the way. Yes, they did a great job. Thank you very much. 
they did a brilliant, brilliant job, and we appreciate it. Working with our partners is really important to us, and uh, mm -hmm. thank you. and Modeling for Advantage is one of our great partners. So thank you for that. But go back to the issue at hand. Yeah, uh, it's going to go quiet for a while, and then you're going to see some mouses and other things come out, mm -hmm. and you're going to see. Let's give it a name: Late War Leviathans, and another game. You're going to see some great stuff there, and uh, and. Uh, we can't talk about it. The restless Kaiser can't talk about it either. I can't talk about it. He's we've seen, seen, we've seen, seen things, man. Yeah. We've seen things. And, and, and Wally Mike's back there nodding. He's behind the cameras. Yeah. So they've seen, seen things they seen can't things. talk about. And I, I you know, There's we some need great to, stuff coming. Yeah. Um, and we've got to do some finishing and polishing yet, but it's ready to get the, the plastic is basically ready to go. But this year, realistically, it's late wall of Athens as you kind of finishing up the no, end. That'll of be the next year. There's that'll be nothing, next year. There's nothing ready anymore for Flames, Flames of War this year. Between now and Christmas, it's going to have a quiet time. You're going to have a quiet time. Yep. You're going to be able to chillax. You're going to be focused on your armies you've got. We've covered the late war now. Yep. I think it's... Um, are we going to bring out a couple of little things on the web and stuff about the Italian campaigns and a couple of the fillers? Mm -hmm. But they're just, they're minor things. These like the parachute regiment brochure you did or whatever. And these are all these web documents. These will be web, web documents, the web army documents. lists and stuff. So a, bit yeah. of, a few of the holes we got, Italy, Market Garden, there's a couple of little holes. Because Italy sits between the late war and the mid war, doesn't it? Correct. So it's, uh, they got that terrible name, which is just awful, that D-Day Dodgers. They they Dodgers. Called, the Americans right. were called there, and it's a terrible right. because exactly. well, it was a horrific campaign. Yeah, it was horrific, and I had the pleasure of. And Mark Clark was an idiot. <laughs> Let's not go there. <laughs> so I wouldn't want to be an American in the Italian company. You got a dumb general in a horrible campaign. Yeah, it was awful. Yeah, and uh, but I, um, so we're going to fill out a few holes. But it's next year you're going to see start seeing late wall of Ivers coming out and a whole new game and stuff. Mm -hmm. I think, and that's very exciting, and I can't really talk about it much, but let's talk about this after that. Yes, because you later mentioned... This, so later the, next year. The ongoing two questions is, when are we going to see some Pacific, and when are we going to see some early war? These we, are the two big Flames of War ongoing questions. Pacific is scheduled for mid-war Pacific, is scheduled to come out... Oh, it's got, it's got it on the sheet. It's, it's happening now. I think guys, I have. I think but I not have. soon. No, I... Uh, but, uh, uh, yeah, that's quite... A, that's a bit away yet, too. Um, so I haven't really got a date or time for that yet, but there you will see mid-war Pacific come out, and that's a whole new thing in a couple of... Um, and this is like Solomon ways. Islands type stuff. Yeah, like, that Singapore, 42. all that stuff. Burma. Oh, si oh, right, yeah. Yeah, the grim bit in Burma. Yeah, the, grim the, the bit. losing bit. The hard bit, yes. The, the hard bit. So you're going to see that. But let's talk about they're all minor releases, and Late Wall of Ithan is going to be massive. It's a lot of plastic. I think there was mm. about. We've I seen. I think you've seen about 12 plastic kits, didn't you, yeah. today? Uh, I, yeah. And there's still a few more to come. I, I will just nod at whatever you say. <laughs> this is what we're approved to say. We've so, seen a lot of plastic today, which yeah. we were not expecting to see. For me, the really exciting project, and we're working on it right now, mm -hmm. is Early War. Yeah, that's uh, and we're starting at Blitzkrieg, and but we're not going to. Everyone's asking, "Oh, when are you going to re-release it?" We're not re-releasing it. It's not about bringing out what we brought out before. What we're going to bring so out. So it's not, it's it's not resin Panzer twos and all, uh, and so forth. We've already got a plastic Panzer. You thing. have already you, got you a plastic Panzer as it happens. Yeah, and it is set up for early war, and people have seen this proof. Yeah, but yep. put the Panzer two aside. It, mm. it is, it's not a re-release. It's not about bringing the stuff out again with a new book. It's about doing the whole period pro properly. I am a firm believer that if we do it right, people will get into it. Okay. And I think it's a great period. Uh, Blitzkrieg, Barbarossa, these are great periods, great fighting. Mm. So this is going to cover Poland through to Barbarossa? It's going to be, we're starting with Blitzkrieg, and then we're going to go to Barbarossa, and then we're going to do some filler stuff like Poland and the desert and stuff. But the first two big the, releases... The desert's not filler stuff, sir. It's not filler stuff, no. <laughs> As an Englishman, by God, it's <laughs> outrageous to describe the, the, the campaign in the Western Desert as filler. Early war. <laughs> yeah, all right. What do you mean? We were having noble victories against the Italians, Correct, sir. they were. Yes. We were having amazing victories against the Italians. But the big 
changes the big effects on the war were Blitzkrieg and Bar Barbarossa. Of course they are. Of course and they are. And that's the big turning points. And that's and Blitzkrieg, that whole France 1940 is still my, my favourite period. And we want to do it right because we, we feel if we do it right, pe people are going to get involved and enjoy it. Yes. And doing it right is doing starter sets. Uh, mm. doing like two player starter sets and like, army boxes. Yeah, like El Alamein and Tobruk. Okay. And You've already got one called Tobruk. There's a lot of tanks. Yes, but I'm saying like that. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. They'll be called different. Oh, right, I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah sorry. Two-player starter sets. I'm yeah. getting you now. I'm yeah, two-player starter sets, army yeah. deals, plastic. And we're talking not just a few plastic tanks. We're talking 20-plus plastic tanks and plastic infantry. 20-plus new yes. plastic tanks. I don't know if all of them are new. Like a Panzer, I'm, I think the I'm The Panzer three kit you already got. Yeah, right? the Panzer two we've already got. Yeah, the yeah. Panzer three we, we can't use the existing kit. Oh, it doesn't do an early enough All variant. the Panzer IV we can't use. There's going to be another Panzer three and four. Yes. Oh, I thought they would do. But uh, right, this is about... But you just made another Sherman variant because it's got a different engine deck. Correct. So when you say you can't use, I'm sure I can use the ones I've already got because they've got the right guns. Yeah, I get told all the time. You get told no, that that's not no, okay. No, because I, from a business perspective, because they cost a lot of money, these moles, I said, yeah. can't we just use... No. Yeah. Yeah, so I, the computer says no. Right. Yes. So uh, just to clarify what you just said, that you just said plastic infantry... Yes. For early war. Yes. This is going to include Frenchmen. Yes. In plastic. Yes. At early least war 20 Germans. vehicles. Early war People Germans. are going to get their Char B in plastic. Yes. They're going to get their Matilda in plastic. Probably. Yes. Are they going to see That's motorcycle more. infantry? We haven't quite got the list finished yet, so I'm not going to start going into there. But the you're reason going to I keep bringing tanks. it up is they're in everybody's early war armies, and nobody's. They clearly didn't work as a concept, but everybody has motorcycle troops as they go into the war. Yeah, I have. And a, they look great. They look great, but they don't actually fight on. Them. <laughs> no, they don't it's like the same. They're sort just of infantry. Trucks. Yeah, so they're another thing that you put on the table and take off when it's actually the fighting happens. So I'm not sure what we're going to do about the motorcycles. That still that's still in discussion and the, the, the German with the sidecar I mean it's just iconic yeah with the it? machine gun and yeah. yes boy, yeah, it's like away. this is not a fighting vehicle <laughs> no they get out is it all the movies yeah no, but they used it for reconnaissance of course yeah that was uh, maybe something but I don't know I, no, but you're no. going to see the Samoas the Sharpies the you know all the stuff the Matildas Vickers the A13 tank. yes you're going to see all of this stuff and, cruiser and, tanks yes Cruiser tank. And some of it still exists, like the Crusaders and stuff are already in plastic. Yes, and you've got that stupid derp turret in the kit yes, frame already correct. to make it's the Crusader in there already, one. yes. Yeah, yeah. So Which, that's, that for me is a personal, exciting doing, mm. going back to Blitzkrieg in France 1940 is just, I can't wait. Now, of course, I got drawers of lead, resin and lead at home, but you know, of course they're not. They're not plastic kits and plastic They're not hard kits. Plastic. Yeah, and plastic kits are better. Let's be honest. I don't think there's any doubt that the hard plastic infantry you've made thus far is fantastic. Thank you. That what we, that what we've seen, and the more of that we can see, you know, um, especially it's the bits that are missing. So German artillery crew, every different cannon you get comes with a slightly different generation of, of of crew yeah. and there's the ones with big hands and there's some of them have got pointy noses in the different like the soft plastic and then the sayo cast ones it'd be great to see a few more of those like you've done a russian artillery sprue that, are we that, likely to see these gaps that, filled that in? is in in the list for early war so, in the list for early yes everyone will have their own artillery crews and early war and stuff and, and we, then they'll be usable right through I, I, some of them are some of them are but we tend tend to we tend to once we got that up and running we can only alish lovely guy from slovenia mm. is our digital infantry sculptor right and he can do so much and he's just finishing now russian world war three team yankee russian and american infantry which are going to be in all in hard plastic. And then he's going on to... Because they're currently... The Russian is in soft plastic. Yes. But I thought that was all right. I think they came out a lot better than the British uh, desert and desert ones. Yes, they did, yes. The, the Russian ones. I thought yes. they were all right for the soft plastic. And the, the American ones are in metal at the moment. Yes, correct. But these are both coming out hard plastic. Hard frame. plastic and a new World the War... Team War Yankee. And a new World War Three starter oh. set. That, yeah. that is exciting. Yeah, with that infantry in it. So we want to start, our starter sets, we want to start adding infantry in them. 
and mm -hmm. we thought that went for the really Yankee ones. yeah i thought that went really well with the stalingrad box for mid-war mm -hmm. and the and the desert boxes i think having some infantry in there and the, the, that vdv box and in between yes. it sold out yes it sold out we can't you can't you can't get it anymore mate it's gone is that ever coming back we don't intend to bring it back really no. we have code creep it, it's all available separately it's all available separately and that's but those guys had mustaches and berets where else are we going to get them? <laughs> they're still available I believe. oh you can buy the infantry separately yes you yeah, can you buy can't, the infantry just separately. can't buy the starter box you can't yeah. buy the starter box you can buy everything yeah. Well, other than the, Mc, uh, the, the what, what, McDonald's, I can say McDonald's. You probably can't. No, I can maybe. say McDonald's. Yeah, yeah. I, all right. I don't think they're going to come in. They got better us. things to do. Than yes, for you. But I, um, and we haven't done anything bad with the sign. It looks good. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. It's marketing for them. Yeah, well, yeah. I don't know right. about that. So, Team Yankee, as you've mentioned, it, we know. Nordic forces that we got the book here. We're going to steal this uh, while he's yep. not looking later. He's taking Nordic it Force, This is coming out very soon. Yes, this um, next week, I with think. With the Swedish S tank. We've seen it. We've touched one. They're beautiful. Um, everybody wants an S tank in their collection. I don't know. I don't I want now another. have. I now have a Swedish army. Because you wanted an, an S tank. Oh, yes, and it's See, full of S tanks and we T72. We might do a live show where we give away a single S tank because that will satisfy a lot of people's needs. You know, it's like the first 10 people to do this, we'll give them an S tank. No, the S Tell you what, if you give cool. us a box, we'll give away an S tank to, the, to end viewers. It's a deal. There we go. Look at that. Wait for that live show. Yep. We will give away because I think a lot of people will just want the one. <laughs> it's such an iconic vehicle, I and just know, as like a modelling project. You need a unit, though. Don't listen to them. You need you know a whole I mean, unit. even if you're not play team Yankee, if you're just a tank enthusiast. Oh, I suppose, yeah. I think it's such an iconic vehicle. Yes. No, and it's a great you know, little kit too. It's as, a, a as, kit. as a thing to sort of have on. Then next, later this year, yes. is this NATO forces. Yes. So and I'm, I've not. I've not even had a PDF of this yet from, uh, it's usually Ryan that sends them out. Yeah, now, Ryan or Libby, yeah. There's that, so I don't know whether I can see what's new in here and whether I can say, are you able to say what's going to be new in here? Well, Leclerc was a famous uh, French uh, general. general, so yeah. yes, maybe something like that. But you're not giving too much away because we've seen that frame at our Adepticon. Oh, okay. People took Sorry. pictures of that, yeah. so that's out there. So um, this Later this year, not sure exactly when yet. Let me look. That yeah, sorry, I'm not always. Uh, uh, it's coming out October. October time, and is that going to come with a starter set as well? Problem is, the studio time's about a year different from where every other right. time. So. Yeah. I there'll be a picture got... at the back if there is one, won't yes, there? Yes, it'll be in the catalogue. The catalogue's always where you want to be. And then the last of the major games that we cover, uh, if you can say something. So th things, we're entering a new phase with World of Tanks, the miniatures yes. game. Um, we're getting a new starter set, which is imminent, I think, isn't it? Which is going to have IS-3 and mouse and things like that in it. Um, it. All in this shiny new red and black packaging. It's coming out and you start a set is coming out in September. In September, yeah. Yep. So it's coming out within the next the next month or so. Yep. Uh, we've had Wave 11, but I've had a bit of a look at your crib sheet there, and you, you, the, the, there is a there is a long term plan for World yep, of Tanks. There is a Wave 18. Wave. There's a Wave 18 on the schedules. So for anyone, just think, you know, some people online are a bit nervous about like I'm collecting tank cards for this game. Is it going to be supported yes. into the future? Yeah, no, World of Tanks is, is a is a very serious relationship for us and World of Tanks. Yep. Uh, Wargamer and dot, dot net. So mm. yes, it's it's going to be well supported. You're going to see a whole pile of new packaging and look and feel. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a great game, and uh, we're going to. It's it's not going any anywhere. So uh, the Kaiser early on told me that uh, one of the things we haven't done is done a kind of road map of the thing, which came and with the original box. So yes. you knew it was. It, th there's a plan for this. Correct. So we we and that's a good idea, and we. That's on my list to talk to the New Zealand studio about. So right, we so need we to might, do, do that. Might, so even if there aren't dates, just to know, like, this is what's yeah, coming what, in. Yeah, what these. are the waves? And, yeah, uh, yeah. Because you, you presumably expect? you've already got that stuff planned out. Correct. Yeah. So we just need to tell people about it. And you've it. already committed with the, your relationship, your financial relationship, presumably, yes. with World of Tanks. Yeah, no, our, 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 we've got, you know, our contract continues to run and will run for yeah. a long time forward. Great, great. It's good to see. And the new game... There is there is no rules change. 
the new box, the new starter no, box is just no rules change. It's just got new just tanks. Better, yeah, new tanks, and we got kind of unit packs as well of three tanks, so. which are coming out. Yeah. Yes, and there for anyone that's already bought, I'm not right believing they are basically the same tanks and the same cards. If that you had previously. Yep, but they'll continue on with the new ways. Yeah. And it's just easier... To with get a, a bunch of them. Yeah, with a single... It's basically about supporting the retailer. Yeah. The customer, I don't think it's going to make a huge difference to the customer. The retailer has less SKUs. Yeah. And it's easier, and he's selling something that's worth... Um, more money and it's yeah. easier for and it's better for the retailer right oh so you think the waves will be a one and done it's like you'll be they'll be you'll produce an amount of wave 11 yeah. and then it w it will appear in the platoon pack yes so you won't continue wave 11 no, indefinitely they will continue in the three packs it'll continue in the three packs yeah can you pass one here sorry just so we can just so we can wave one. I mean, yeah. we have actually reviewed the first one oh, okay so you have reviewed coming. it sorry we, no 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 sorry so we're gonna look at those things uh that's all right. Just that one there. Yeah. So this is that's the old way of doing it, and the problem is the skew count just went. There's yeah, there's loads of product now. Yeah, there's skew yeah, there's count 44 and retailers items. can't follow it. So if you do it like this, forty four becomes um, there. You divided by four. Yeah. Divided by three. Divided by three. In fact, yeah. It's yes. Still a lot, but yeah, it's not. Still a lot, it's but it's, full it's shop. much more manageable. Yeah. Absolutely. I love the new packaging. It really um, it stands out. Yeah, I think this one. Kind of from a distance, it's hard to see the tank, and that you know, at the end of the day, that's what World of Tanks is. It's tanks, and uh, this one makes the, this one has a much better shelf presence. I feel. Yeah, absolutely. No, I think I think it's really good. Battlefront's in very good shape. Um, the hobby, I think, is in great shape. Yeah, I Funny. think COVID's been very good for hobbying. Yes, it has. I think been. a lot a lot of people went back to the kind of the hobby of their childhood. Yes. Yeah. And I think our partners like Modeling for Advantage and. The other ones do a great job. Uh, uh, maybe even a shout out to Fog of War with his reviews Harry, about yeah, yeah, yeah. Harry does some cracking videos yeah. on your stuff. Yeah, yeah. So uh, and he actually his stuff. Mm. Uh, my guys in KL and Kuala Lumpur and the designer, model designers, they really focus on his on his reviews because of the it detail. helps them. It helps them on their next model. It, it gives them ideas and stuff for the next really? model. Really? Yeah, so they, they listen to his feedback. Yes. Well, there you go, Harry. Now check that. <laughs> they actually <laughs> use your videos to improve the product. Yeah, don't, you say that don't about my send us a bill. Yeah, yeah, don't send us <laughs> a bill. Uh, <laughs> well, we use an Australian. I hear they can be mean. <laughs> I'm not going there. Yes. Yeah. Uh, All right. <laughs> but uh, um, we, yeah, we love working with our partners, and that's mm. really important because they add so much value. Mm. Um, Modeling for Advantage has a. A shop as well, and he's a customer of ours, and mm. we su we hopefully we support him well. Yeah, I got to and meet my uh, my rep as, as yeah. it were. It's mostly Anders. Mrs. Kaiser that does yeah. that. He's at yeah. Anders, yeah, and he's going to show us how to play one of the games this yeah, afternoon. Yeah, he's going to show you how to play Aliens, and Chris Potter's going to. If you've hopefully got time, going to show you how to play the new um, Star Trek Away Missions game. Ah, yes, I, ha I have looked at that. It does look interesting. It's very exciting. It's uh, that's been a long project at the Auckland Studio. It's a miniatures game um, with just, I think the figures are great and the game plays really well. So We might get you some pictures of the figures because you have made an interesting design choice with those. They do have quite big heads. Yes, they have. But it heads. means that they look like the actors. Well, the thing is, we, we, that was the third stage. The first stage, we made realistic figures. We wanted mm -hmm. figures that were apps because we make, we're good at making realistic things. Yeah. And then you just put them down there and, you know, half a meter away and, and they all look exactly the same because they're human beings in 35 right. 40 mil and uh, yeah, and you try to pose them and they just didn't have the oomph and I, so we we kind of took a bit of inspiration from the chibi sort of look yeah like. right right yeah one yeah. of the anime styles without, without going you know making heads this big or anything but we mm. took a bit of inspiration for that and i think we've got something now and it's taken a long time to get there and a lot of throwing away stuff. But I think we've got to look and feel now that is that is ours. And is also, I think, does it does justice to what they are. And it's 
and it's fun. They're easy to paint. They paint up really well. And this is called Star Trek Away Missions? Star Trek Away Missions. Yeah, yeah. I definitely, I definitely one of the things to look at. You're not going to see it on the channel because we have a million things <laughs> in chain, but it's one of the games that I want to try out, show or something, or maybe yeah. I'll have a go this afternoon. Well, Peter, thank you for your time. I'm sure the guys are really grateful for all the things. Thank so thank you. Bye bye, folks. See you. Thank you much. Hello. If you're enjoying our Flame to War content and considering getting one of the starter sets or starter armies, why don't you think about buying one from our online web store at modelingforadvantage.co.uk? Thank you.